Hello everyone! Today, I'd like to go over a budget commander deck that I've built around, Niv-Mizzet, Perrin. This deck was actually suggested by a viewer, who'd requested that I build while trying to avoid infinite combos. Which I'm all for, as I'm not really a big fan of going infinite myself. So thank you, Beasting, for the deck suggestion. As always, I've designed this deck to cost less than $45 at the time of recording, using prices listed by Scryfall, including basic lands at 10 cents each, but not including shipping and other more variable expenses. Now, let's take a look at this deck. So, our commander is Niv-Mizzet, Perrin, a 5-5 flying dragon wizard that costs 3 blue and 3 red mana that can't be countered when cast. Additionally, when you draw, Niv-Mizzet deals 1 damage to any target, and whenever a player casts an instant or a sorcery, you draw a card. So being uncounterable is definitely nice, especially when considering that our commander costs a hefty 6 mana right off the gate, though admittedly it won't help against things like a swords or a doom blade. But, provided we can keep our commander on the field for a sizable amount of time, we'll be able to burn down a bunch of weenies or chip away at life totals throughout every turn. And, given we're in red, we can always amplify that damage to chunk larger creatures down. But, let's go over what this deck actually wants to do. First up, given that we have a 6 mana commander with no generic mana costs, our ramp is going to need to be a little bit more focused on color fixing than I normally do for a 2 color commander. And I have slightly more mana sources in this deck than normal to hopefully get Niv-Mizzet out sooner than turn 6 in the vast majority of our games. Since we'll be pinging creatures down and players with 1 damage from our commander quite frequently, we can look into adding some damage amplification to make controlling opponent creatures and lowering life totals even faster and more effective. We'll also have a bunch of spells with effects that trigger whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, as we'll be casting many of those as well, with many of these effects leading to even more damage to our opponents. And as you may suspect, we'll have a healthy collection of instances and sorceries to cast. The majority will be focused on interaction spells, be it damage dealing, permanent destruction, or counter spells. However, since Niv-Mizzet lets us deal damage whenever we draw, and more cards to work with is always appreciated, we certainly won't turn our backs on instances and sorceries that give us draw, as those can damage as burn spells with our commander out, or to help us keep our hand full while we're trying to get that 6 CMC commander out. Overall, this is a fairly spell-heavy deck that may take a couple of turns to get set up, especially with 6 CMC as our commander, but it can provide a lot of control and interaction once the ball gets rolling. So with that, let's start getting into the meat of this deck, starting with our ramp. First up, we have some land-based ramp with Wayfarer's Bauble to tutor a basic land onto the battlefield tapped, and Navigation Orb, which lets us tutor two basics and or gate lands that we will reveal, put one onto the battlefield tapped, and the other into our hand. For this card, we have a small package of gate lands, including Gone Gate, Sea Gate, Cliff Gate, and Is It Guild Gate, and I always recommend searching for Gone Gate and at least one other gate. You'll have Gone Gate enter the battlefield that turn, and then you'll put the other into your hand, and then on your next land drop, you'll have two untapped dual lands, as Gone Gate can now tap for colored mana, and your other gate enters the battlefield untapped due to Gone Gate. Then we have Fire Diamond and Sky Diamond, tapping for red and blue respectively. Arcane Signet will give us red and blue as needed, is it Signet will convert any mana into a red and a blue mana, and Felwar Stone is likely to tap for at least one of our colors. Then, since we really want colored mana, we have some 3 drop mana rocks with Is it Clue Stone, Is it Key Rune, and Is it Locket, all tapping for red or blue. And then we have Firemind Vessel, which taps for 2 mana of different colors. And finally, we have Decanter of Endless Water and Thought Vessel, the former tapping for any color, and the latter unfortunately tapping for generic but both are here specifically due to them giving us no maximum hand size. Speaking of which, we have two more spells that give us no maximum hand size, which will be quite handy in a deck like this as we're going to be drawing quite a lot once niv Mizzet is out. These are Spellbook, a zero drop artifact that simply makes our hand size unlimited, and Wizard Class, a class enchantment that has the first level give us no maximum hand size. The second level has us draw two cards, and then the third level lets us buff a creature with a plus one plus one counter whenever we cast an instant or a sorcery. Which also segues us quite nicely into the next chapter of this deck, spells that trigger when we cast instances and sorceries. First up we have Sorcerer Class, another class enchantment that has you draw 2, then discard 2, for its first level. Its second level has our creatures turn into red-blue mana dorks, but that mana has to be spent on instances, sorceries, or gaining class levels. The level 3 gives, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, that spell deals damage to each opponent equal to the number of instances and sorceries that you've cast this turn. Then we have Young Pyromancer and Talran, Sky Summoner, which make creature tokens whenever you cast an instant or sorcery. Young Pyromancer making a 1-1 red elemental, and Talran making a 2-2 flying blue drake. Then we have Electrostatic Field and Erebor Flamesmith, creatures that deal 1 damage to each opponent whenever you cast an instant or sorcery. 
and Rock Slide Sorcerer deals one damage to any target whenever you cast an instant sorcery or wizard spell. And then we have Fiery Inscription and Gutter Snipe, both dealing two damage to each opponent whenever you cast an instant or sorcery. Fiery Inscription also has The Ring Tempts You, but this is the only instant of that keyword in this deck, and doesn't really play much of a role. Just know that you have to choose a ring bear and they effectively have Skulk given to them. But now that we've gotten some extra value for casting instances and sorceries, let's look at ways to make that damage even more potent. First up, we have a few cards that are additive to our damage, which include Mechanized Warfare, Torbran, Thane of Redfell, and Embermaw Hellion. Mechanized Warfare adds one extra damage to our red and or artifact damage sources. Torbran adds two damage to damage being dealt from our red sources, and Embermaw Hellion adds one extra damage whenever a red source we control would deal damage to a player or permanent. It also happens to be a 4-5 with Trample. Additionally, we have a few damage multipliers, which include Dictate of the Twin Gods, Angrath's Marauders, and City on Fire. The first two being damage doublers, and the last being a damage tripler. It's also good to note that Dictate of the Twin Gods makes everything deal double damage, not just the stuff that we control. And City on Fire has Convoke, letting us tap our creatures to help pay generic mana costs. And frankly, most of our creatures aren't intended for combat, so tapping some for this isn't a massive loss in most of our cases. But with all that set up, let's start going through the instances and sorceries we'll be casting to get value out of these previous spells. We can start with spells that deal damage or destroy permanents. First up, we have some artifact destruction with Smelt and Vandal Blast destroying a target artifact for one red. Vandal Blast additionally has an overload cost of four and a red, which destroys each artifact you don't control, a one-sided artifact board wipe. A braid gives us the option to destroy an artifact or deal three damage to a creature. And Fiery Confluence gives us options, letting us choose three effects from three modes, and being able to choose the same mode multiple times. We can deal one damage to each creature, which could be used as a board wipe for one to three toughness weenies, two damage to each opponent, or destroy an artifact, making this a fairly versatile card actually. Then, moving on to pure damage spells, we have Shock and Tar Fire, which deal two damage, the former to any target, and the latter to a creature or player. Electrolyze also deals two damage, but we can spread that among one or two players and or creatures, and it's also a cantrip, letting us draw to replace it. Lightning Bolt and Chain Lightning deal three damage to any target, but if the opponent we're accosting with Chain Lightning has two available red mana, they can copy the spell and choose a new target for it. Beacon Bolt deals damage to a creature equal to the number of instances and sorceries you own in your graveyard or in exile, making this something that should be more potent in later turns. And it has Jumpstart, letting you cast it from your graveyard by discarding a card and paying Beacon Bolt's mana cost. Sizzle simply deals 3 damage to each opponent. And finally, for a few board wipes in case we aren't able to keep our opponent's boards under control through burn, we have Chain Reaction and Star Storm. Chain Reaction deals X damage to each creature, with X being the number of creatures on the battlefield, and Star Storm is an X cost spell dealing X damage to each creature. Additionally, Starstorm can be cycled away in case we draw it, but don't happen to need a board wipe that game. Now, niv mizzet does provide us with a significant source of draw, but it would be risky to rely on it entirely to keep our hand full, and given we also deal damage for each card we draw with niv mizzet on the field, draw spells pull double duty in this deck, giving us more spells to work with, and letting us hammer our opponents. First up we have two permanents with Archmage Emeritus and Thought Reflection. Archmage Emeritus has us draw a card whenever we cast or copy an instant or sorcery, and Thought Reflection has us draw two cards whenever we would have drawn a card. Then we have Winged Words and Divination, sorceries that let us draw two. Winged Words additionally cost one less generic to cast if we control a creature with flying, such as niv mizzet Concentrate and Treasure Cruise are sorceries that let us draw three, and since Treasure Cruise has Delve, we can exile cards from our graveyard to pay generic mana costs and can potentially cast it for just one blue mana. Then we have a couple of X mana cost sorceries with Mindspring and Invoke the Firemind. Mindspring simply has us draw X cards, and Invoke the Firemind has us either draw X cards or have the spell deal X damage to a creature or player. But given that our commander will deal at least one damage, depending on if we have damage amplification, for each card that we draw, you may as well just draw. And then finally, we have two X mana cost instances with Pull from Tomorrow and Stroke of Genius. The former having us draw X and then discard one, and the latter having us draw X. But these are nice since, as instance, we can cast them whenever, giving us more freedom to leave mana open for our opponent's turns. Now, we do have a good amount of redundancy in this deck, such that it can definitely still hobble along even if our commander is repeatedly dealt with. And frankly, our commander could be a focal point depending on the pod, 
but it would be much better if we could just leave our commander on the field, so let's go over some cards that we can use to protect our commander. First up, we'll look to give niv Hexproof so that it's no longer vulnerable to targeted removal. Equipment such as Swiftfoot Boots, Mask of Avacyn, and Mirror Shield all grant Hexproof along with some additional buffs. And we also have Curator's Ward, an aura that gives an enchanted permanent Hexproof, and if that permanent ends up leaving the battlefield anyway, and if it was historic, which niv is, you draw two cards. And now you may be wondering, we're in blue and almost done this deck. Where are our counter spells? And well, they're here as I mostly view them as an additional way to protect our commander from board wipes and targeted removal, though obviously they can be used for other things as well. For general counter spells, we have, well, counter spell for two blue, but also stoic rebuttal and ionize, both for three total mana, but stoic rebuttal can be cast for two blue if you control three or more artifacts, and ionize deals two damage to the controller of the spell we're countering. Then to counter non-creature spells, we have Spell Pierce, which counters a spell unless its caster pays two generic mana, Negate, simply countering non-creature spells for a generic and a blue, and Unwind, which can untap enough lands to pay for itself when cast. Then finally we have Test of Talents and Dispel, the former countering an instant or sorcery spell, and the latter just instant spells. Given Commander is a singleton format, the rest of the text on Test of Talents is a bit irrelevant, and while these two are limited in scope on what they can counter, they should still serve to protect our commander in a large number of cases. But with all of our spells laid out, let's take a look at our land base. As mentioned in ramp, we have the four gate lands in this deck with Gone Gate, Sea Gate, Cliff Gate, and Is It Guild Gate? Then we have Command Tower, tapping for red or blue, Exotic Orchard, which is likely to tap for at least one of our mana colors, and Path of Ancestry, which will tap for red or blue, but unfortunately it enters the battlefield tapped. Then we have Sulphur Falls, which can enter the battlefield untapped if we control an island or a mountain, Shivan Wreath, a red-blue pain land, and Frostboil Snarl, a reveal land that can enter the battlefield untapped if you reveal an island or mountain from your hand while playing it. Then we have Temple of Epiphany, a Scry land, Swiftwater Cliffs, a Life Gain land, and Izzet Boilerworks, a bounce land, though unfortunately each of these enter the battlefield tapped. And, due to a desire for mana fixing to make casting niv mizzet on curve as likely as possible, we have a few extra tapped lands than my average two-color deck would have, with Highland Lake, Silver Bluff Bridge, and Molten Tributary. Then we have some land tutor lands with Grixis Panorama, Shire Terrace, and Myriad Landscape, each tapping for a generic, though Myriad Landscape enters the battlefield tapped. And our last non-basic land is Reliquary Tower, which unfortunately does tap for generic mana, but importantly, it gives us no maximum hand size. And aside from that, we'll fill the rest of our deck with 7 islands and 8 mountains. But now that we've gone over every card in this deck, let's take a look at that price. And as you can see, this deck is currently ringing in at about $44.5 at the time of recording, including basics at 10 cents each, but not including the cost of shipping, taxes, or the like. Now, I'd like to go over a few upgrades that you may wish to consider if you're wanting to build this deck, but are willing to put a little bit larger budget in. For some additional damage amplification, we can look towards Sulfim, Mayhem Dominus, Fiery Emancipation, and Furnace of Wrath. For counterspells, we can look towards Muddle the Mixture, an offer you can't refuse, and Miscast. And for instances that deal damage or destroy things, we have Pongify, Rapid Hybridization, and Flame of Anor. And finally, for some alternative board wipes, we have Blasphemous Act and Rolling Earthquake. Regardless, if you'd like to build, adapt, upgrade, or play with this deck, the link as always is in the description down below. If you liked the video, consider giving it a like, and if you'd like more budget commander decks, maybe consider dropping a sub. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.